The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Welcome to the Old Time Radio Network Detective Stories, continuing America's love affair with private eyes. We now go back to the early days of radio and our imaginations with our feature presentation. Now for this week's episode of Bulldog Drummond. Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. Once a year, there comes into every man's life, even a detective's, the time when he recaptures the spirit of his boyhood. Hurry, hurry, hurry! This way to the main entrance to the big top! This to is the, the time when the greatest way. show on hurry, earth, the hurry, circus, hurry. has come to town. In the magic wonderland of a sawdust earth and a canvas sky, the years roll back to the springtime of life. And thus it was that Denny and I were on the midway, headed for the big top. We came to the circus in our yearly search for the thrills of lost youth. But we found murder. Captain Drummond, uh, just a moment, please. What now, Denny? That popcorn stand over there. We still have ample time for the main show. Again. (laughs) Denny, you're worse than a child. Three hot dogs, two ice cream cones... Four bags of peanuts. Only two bags for myself, sir. I shared them with the elephant. Very well. Two bags of peanuts. And now popcorn. Denny, you'll get sick just like a child who overeats during his day at the circus. Oh, good, sir. Then I'll feel like a child again. Oh, well, what's the use? Very well. Popcorn it'll be. Now, really, sir. Uh, oh, I say. I'm it... sorry. Well, young lady, I suggest that you watch where you're going. You nearly knocked me in. I'm sorry. Apparently, this is your pocketbook. Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Come along, Denny. Just a minute, please. Yes? Would you do me a favor? What? A very special favor. It's terribly important. Why do you keep looking around? Please don't ask me questions. Now, just put your arms around me quickly. What? Now, look here, young lady. Put your lady. arms around me. He's coming this way. Please, please. Uh, all right, like this? Yes. Really, sir. Hold me closer. Here he comes. Closer? Yes. Please, you mustn't see me. Like this? Yes. Be careful, sir. She you might... trust me, honestly. It'll only be for a moment. Well, frankly, it's a rather pleasant moment. Captain Drummond, to say the least, this is quite unusual. To say the least, it is, Denny. It is. Uh, am I holding you too tightly, Miss... Um... No. I-, I didn't get your name. Please, you mustn't ask me questions. I warn you, sir. She's up to something. He- he's gone. He can let me go now. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I was carried away with my work. I don't know how to thank you. Uh, perhaps I could pay you for your trouble. Oh, no, thank you. The pleasure was mine. Uh, you've been very kind. Goodbye. Oh, she's running off, sir. Quick, we must follow her. No, no, just a minute, Penny. But, sir, she may have... Uh, she may have what? Well, I don't know, but a young lady just doesn't ask a stranger to embrace her unless she's up to something. Or in trouble which is apparently the case in which Miss X has found herself. Oh, and now she's disappeared into the crowd and we know nothing about her. Perhaps we can find out something. How? By looking for the needle in the haystack? No, Denny, by looking for the man who pursued Miss X through the crowd here. And where do you expect to find him? About 20 feet from the spot where we're standing. What? Come along. He's right over there, still looking for Miss X. There, you see, that circus attendant, he's the one. How do you know, sir? Because our young lady in distress fairly shuddered in my arms when he passed by. Now, I'll do the talking, Denny. Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me? Yeah? Are you looking for someone? What's it to you? I can help you. Go on, beat it. You are looking for a young lady. I'd say she's about 25, blonde, very attractive. Say, how do you know? Knowing things is my business. Where is she? Why? Because it's important. 
To whom? Now listen, I gotta find her and find her quick, so come on, give. As soon as you tell me why you're finding her is so important. Because, Nosey, that dame is Marion Mars of the Flying Marses. The Star Trapeze Act in this circus. The act goes on in 15 minutes and we've been trying to find her. Now tell me, where is she? I don't know. What? Say, bud, what are you giving me? The last time I saw the young lady, she was headed for the big tent. Get out of my way. I gotta find that dame before I lose my job. So, our mysterious Miss X is Marion Morris, Denny. Of the flying Morrises. And she certainly had us up in the air. Quite. But now that we're down to earth again, we're going to look her up. Good, good. Frankly, sir, I'm curious as to why she was hiding from that man. And, Denny, I am especially curious as to this. Why, sir, it's a gun. Where did you get it? While I was doing Marion Morris the favor of uh, embracing her, she slipped this revolver into my topcoat pocket. There's their dressing room wagon, Denny. The Flying Morrises, Continental Death-Defying Aerialist. Come on. Oh, why must these things always happen to us? Now we'll miss the main show and all the circus excitement. We still have ten minutes. Besides, I have a feeling we're in for some private excitement outside the sawdust rings. Here's the wagon. Yes? We're looking for Marion Morris. What do you want? Oh, it's a personal matter. I should like to see her alone. Uh, she not here. What you want from Marion? I said it was a personal matter. When did you see her last? I do not answer strangers' questions. Well, you'd better answer ours if you know what's good for you. This gentleman is Captain Hugh Drummond. You are police? Semi-officially. Now... Uh, Marion would do nothing wrong. She's a good girl. I bring her up since time she was so big. I, Santos Gomez, teach her always to do right. Please... You tell me why you here? First, where is Marion now? She in main tent with Paul. Paul? Yes, her husband and Chris Adams. The three of them. They are the great flying Morrises. Uh, they do their act in five minutes. Please, now you tell me what kind of trouble Marion in. I didn't say she was in trouble. But from the looks of things, she's headed straight for it. What do you mean? This revolver. Where? Where you get it? You recognize it? I know someday it'd bring trouble. Gun bring only disaster. I tell him only wicked man have need of gun. I tell him. This revolver isn't Marion's. No, no. Marion is good girl. He make trouble. He have gone to kill. I know. Come I on, know. come on. Who is he supposed to be? If this revolver isn't Marion's, whose is it? That gun is his. Her husband, Paul. I tell him gun only make trouble. Here, give me your hand, Marion. I'll help you up. Come on. That's it. Chris Adams, the gallant young man on the flying trapeze. Oh. I was just being helpful. You're too helpful, Adams. I don't like it. I told you a hundred times, Marion's my then wife. Why don't you I... treat her decently as a wife should be? And I don't like your concern about my manners toward my wife. Now listen, oh, you. Chris, please, not now. And where were you two before showtime? I know you're sneaking off to meet each other. That's a lie. It's no use, Chris. You won't believe anything we say. Let, let's not argue now. Why, Mrs. Morris? Do you object to our audience below? This isn't part of the show. Can't we wait till later? There may not be later. One slip from up here and down and out goes one of us. This trio could very easily become a doubles act. I suppose that's occurred to you too many times, how simple it would be to get rid of me. Oh, stop it. Well, some fool once said the show must go on. But I've often wondered why. Hey, hey. A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. I Legend of a man and a horse, a collie man. The story of the Lone Ranger and his great horse, Silver. The 
Lone Ranger and Toto were trailing the worst outlaw in the West. His name was Butch Cavendish. They had followed his trail for many weeks, until finally they noticed that the footprints of the outlaw's horse were fresh. Cavendish now. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the unhappy flying marshals. Let's get ready. May I have the rosin bag? My hands are damp. Of course. Here. Oh, shot my horse. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, how did that happen? Paul, you got Tuttle's that rosin bag. Tired and no did I? Speed for the animal Cavendish road. The outlaw. Never escaped. mind, Mary. And this towel will do. Let's get going. Let's keep our audience waiting. He found the Lone oh, Ranger standing the way, beside his dead horse. I'll go good first, Tuttle. What will you do? My routine, brave. including the but double next flip. horse, must be oh, faster. You can't do that to Chris. I wish that I said he'll do the double oh, flip. Chris hasn't done it in months. He might be killed. Yeah. White stallion. Ah. That's right, Mary Him dear. Your valley over there. If Chris does Cavendish that double goes. flip in my we'll place, he might be killed. Oh, you can't do it tonight. Well, here I go. So long and good luck, Chris. Don't worry, Mary. I can handle it. I don't know what you're doing. horse carried the lone ranger. My last day with the axe. Better than bridle. While the masked man the and the Indian, Indian continued on the turn now. the outlaw's yes. trail. I'll be okay. When they reached the top of a hill, look, Toto. <coughs> they halted suddenly. All right, Chris, get in your act. Here goes nothing. Your words were never oh. spoken. Paul, you're trying to have They saw a great himself. white stallion in really, a with a giant buffalo. The horse was plunging, rearing, charging, and dodging wildly. And the sun and you love me, don't you? Don't you love me? Silver. How could they I? realized that this was the legendary white stallion. <laughs> the one precious, ranchers Chris. and hunters had talked so much about. Now let's see how he comes out on the double flip. I'll try to shoot the buffalo. He made it! He made it! Yeah, he As he ran down the hill, the Lone Ranger won. Well, and now we can have that little talk later after all. I'll get up the next The buffalo charged again and again. The splendid muscles of a white horse were slow in responding. Then too slow. He was caught by the buffalo's charge. Ready down there. Ready. There he goes. I get set. Another charge. Million weights. The horse coming and he couldn't dodge. He staggered and fell. The monster drew back and lowered his head for the death charge. And then two shots rang out. The buffalo shuddered from the impact of the masked man's bullets. For an instant, he stood motionless. Then fell. I'll be back in a moment to continue our story. The greatest show on earth unfolds a drama packed Cruelly with thrills and excitement. The white stallion lay but on a trapeze platform 70 feet above the sawdust ring, During the next several days, a private the drama went the on. Cared for the injured Result? Horse. Then the a wounds man were closed, killed. and the horse's strength had returned. There was once more fire in his eye, a spring in his step, and his head was lifted proudly. He didn't have a chance. He He's himself again. Him, oh, Mary, 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 and a good horse. I wonder if you'll take a saddle. You must Let's try. Not. I like yeah, that, my boy. child. Let me get rope. Him run away. No, I don't know wait. how it happened. Let him go. Now you I'd listen like to, to me. That horse more than anything in the he world. Was but he was perhaps the best. He fought for it. Yes. He was wicked. Yeah. And the wicked us. are punished. Oh, the no. sun reflects from his Sanders, you, mustn't, ah. you mustn't say that. Him look <laughs> sir. Ah, now, Marion, you, you, you must rest. Be a name for Hear him. me, you rest. Silver! I will not let you be disturbed. Silver! You Silver! rest now. Toto, he's coming back. It's just as if he knew what I said. Yes? Silver! I should like to speak to Mrs. Clark. Silver, I will not me. let her be disturbed. Hold me, hold me, Later you come back. As the mighty stallion felt the haunter, he felt as if from a chill. Every instinct told him that he must flee at once to preserve his freedom. And yet he stood his ground. It wasn't gratitude that kept him there. It was something stronger. Some mysterious bond of friendship and understanding. This man is Captain he heard the Drummond, man's voice, Marion. And he liked it. He said that you put Paul's gun Silver. in his pocket. Mrs. We're Morris is quite aware of the details. Uh, uh, Captain Drummond, I... Uh, use halter. I can now explain that. The saddle. I, oh, I wanted to get oh, rid of that like gun. That. Take saddle. I, I was afraid was my husband like this. would... Now, Silver... That your We're husband would what, together. Mrs. The horse was wild and unused to the Captain ways of men and the weight of a Chris saddle Adams and a rider. But the masked man was a Captain kind Drummond. teacher. He was gentle oh, yet firm. And Silver was intelligent. 
The stallion and seemed to sense no the desires of the Lone Ranger and did his best to cooperate. I, I had he learned quickly, and after several days of training, Marion tells me, I know. I'm going yes. after Cavendish. Yes, it is. It is the truth. Yes, and Roman, it is. You must believe it. I. You, you no hoofs have ever beat the flames like those she thundering hoofs of the tragedy. great horse Silver. When her husband During the died past in few accident, days, Cavendish but had gotten far away, but the masked man and Toto trailed him relentlessly with only a minimum of rest. It took days Why to cut down the outlaw's lead, Both but at long last, Cavendish came into view. been filed yeah. down to give yeah. way on the heavy strain. The mighty stallion responded oh, with a new burst of speed. I say... Cavendish no fired wild shots over his shoulder plan, until his gun was empty. His horse, though powerful and fast, was no match for the charging silver. Fear and panic filled the outlaw's face. He heard the hoofbeats ever nearer. And then the masked man shout, I want you, Cavendish! Over here, Denny. Over here. The masked man's avowed mission was accomplished. The last of the Cavendish gang was captured to be tried by law and punished for his crimes. No luck. There were many others whose criminal plans were to be challenged by the Lone Ranger, his faithful Indian companion Toto, and his great horse Silver. Come on, we're through waiting. Well, in the vernacular, sir, Adam has taken us on the leg of on the land, Denny. Well, whatever it is, sir, he's gone. There's no doubt in my mind that he's the murderer. He's the one who filed those trapeze ropes. That's a valid possibility. Possibility? It's a certainty, sir. The motive is well established. He hated Paul Morris. So did Santos. And don't forget that Santos was in charge of packing and setting up the axe equipment. As a matter of fact, Denny, Mrs. Morris doesn't escape my suspicion either. But neither Santos nor Mrs. Morris ran away. That much is in their favor. Yes, that and nothing more. All right, come on in. We'll see what this dressing room has to offer. Uh, pull on that light over there. I say, sir, what if Adam should return and find us here? But, Denny, you're the one who's convinced he's flown the coop. Yes, but, you know, sir, just in case. Then his presence will be most welcome. In the meantime, let's have a look around. See what you can find in that trunk over there. I'll look into this one. Yes, sir. No, nothing in here, sir. Nothing but his circus attire. Uh, there's a valise over there near the dressing table. Check on that. Well... What is it, sir? Come here, Denny. Look at this. What? Captain Drummond. Is this what the well-equipped aerialist carries about? A carpenter's file. Well-equipped murderer is more like it. I told you all along, sir. Adams is the murderer. There's Exhibit A. So it seems. Don't move. You're both what? covered. Why, sir, if I that... said don't move. It's the circus attendant who pursued Mrs. Morris through the crowd this evening. So it is. You know, Denny, we've quite forgotten to take this gentleman into consideration. All right, cut the jabber, you two. What are you doing here? We might ask you the same question. Yeah, you might. Only me and this shooter asking the questions. Hey, what's that you got in your hands? As if the gentleman didn't know, Denny. Cut the act. What is it? A carpenter's file. And... A murder weapon. Murder weapon? The gentleman appears genuinely surprised. Come on, give. If you insist, this file was evidently used in bringing about the death of Paul Morris this evening. And you found it here in Adam's tent? That's the general idea. Hey, what are you two doing mixed up in this business? The name is Drummond. I specialize in this type of business. Your name's what? Captain Drummond, and I'm Denny. Well, why didn't you say so? You didn't ask. Does it make any difference? <laughs> oh, it doesn't make any difference. I'm telling this guy Adams myself for the Acme Insurance Company. Name's Al Monahan. You're a detective. Yeah. This guy Adams had a trapeze act with a dame in another show last year. The dame's a nice kid named Evelyn Roberts. So one night, Evelyn takes a 60-foot dive, and she's out of this world. To the cops, everything looks legit. And Adams collects the insurance on the act. 
But Acme don't like the way the case smells, so they retain me to bloodhound Adams, which I do. So Adams ties up with the Morrises and... I told you, sir, Adams was the killer. Go on, Monaghan. So he ties up with the Morrises. The way I see it, he makes a play for the dame, which ain't hard on account of she ain't so hot for a ball and chain anyway. So Adams is in solid. Morris takes a nosedive thanks to Adams. The dame knows from nothing... And Adams works her for a grab of the insurance, though. Well, aren't you going to tell Mrs. Morris? Ah, uh, you crazy. The dame's in love with a guy. She might even give him the tip off. No, I just sit and wait for Adams. I say, imagine that, sir. He expects to capture a killer just by sitting and waiting. Sure, it's easy. I keep an open eye on the dame. Now she's the cheese in my trap. Adams is hungry for that insurance, though, and when she gets it, the rat comes out of his hole for the nibble, and Monahan's got him. Take the car around back to the garage, Danny. I'll go up to the apartment a while. Yes, sir. Captain Drummond. Adams. I thought you'd never get here. I've been waiting outside your house for hours. And I've been looking for you. I know it, but it had to be this way. I've got to talk to you. All right, you can talk to me down at police headquarters. No, you don't understand. You've got to help me. The way you helped Paul Morris? Believe me, I had nothing to do with it. Oh, yes, yes, it was an accident. Like Evelyn Roberts' death. Evelyn? I know all about it. Evelyn's death was an accident. I was completely exonerated. It won't be that simple this time. Now you're up against an open and shut case of murder. But I don't... With understand. evidence complete, down to the murder weapon. The carpenter's file found in your trunk. But that's impossible. Don't you see? That murder wasn't planned for Paul Morris. Well, what? Paul made me switch parts with him tonight. He was doing my routine. I perform on the upper trapeze. That murder was planned for me. you understand what you're supposed to do? Yes. I'm to walk in as if I knew nothing. I'm to play for time. Right. And play it to the hilt. Thank you, sir. I don't understand all this, letting Mr. Adams walk into a trap, probably to certain death. He'll be protected. May I ask how? You'll see, Denny. Oh, really, sir? It's as if you didn't trust me. Why, Denny? Well, it's true. And that telegram you received this morning, you were secretive about that, too. Then you'll learn everything in due time, if things work out to my expectations. Please, sir, do you mind giving Mr. Adams and me just a slight idea of what you expect to happen? I'm borrowing from the detective Monaghan. But it's obvious now that Monaghan's conclusions were wrong. Oh, it's not his conclusions. It's his method of trapping the killer that appeals to me. I think it'll work out. At any rate, we'll soon find out. Here's Marion Morris's dressing wagon. Adams, you go first. All right. Yes, come in. Chris! Hello, Marion. Chris, where have you been? Oh, Captain Drummond. We came along. I have some news for you. You found my husband's murderer. I knew Chris didn't do it. I, I knew it. Where is Santos? Oh, no, 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 it, it isn't. Santos, he wouldn't... I suggest that you answer Captain Drummond's question. Where is he? Why, he's packing our equipment away. Mm. Shall I get him, sir? In a moment, Oh, Santos didn't do it. Please, please believe me, he wouldn't. Then perhaps you, Mrs. Morris. Me? Kill my husband? Now, sir, we've got her dead to rights. She's lying. Marion, you knew that I was to use the upper trapeze. That your husband switched routines at the last minute. Which routine? Yes, and you knew it. Stop acting, Mrs. Morris. Paul switched routines with Chris. Yes. Yes, that's right. Paul did switch routines with Chris. Marion, you wanted to kill me. No. No, Chris, no, I... Why, Captain Drummond, what was that? My expectations. Come on, Denny, you two wait here. Captain Drummond, I have him. Why, sir, 
It's Santos and Monaghan. Good work, Santos. Hey, Drummond, I should have knocked you off last night. Why, Ben said it was Monaghan all the time. He tried hey. to kill like you say, Captain Drummond. I stop him in time. I grab gun, the shot, it go into the air. You can let him go now, Santos. I have him covered. But, sir, whom was he shooting at? Chris Adams. Yeah, and I would have gotten him if By you... By the way, Monaghan, your sleuth act went well. I believed you up to a point. Then he isn't a private detective after all. No, Denny. That telegram I received this morning, the one about which you were so curious, came from the Acme Insurance Company in answer to an inquiry of mine. They had no detective trailing Adams, not even one named Monaghan. Well, then who is he? Roberts. That's who I am, Al Roberts. Robert? Evelyn Roberts. Chris Adams' former partner, the one who fell to her death. The one they murdered, my sister. They lied. The cops, all of them, they lied. He murdered her. I'll get him. I'll get him yet. As usual, sir, I'm surprised at the outcome. How did you know that Monaghan, or rather Roberts, was the killer? I didn't. I was just curious as to where he fitted in this case. But what prompted you to check on him in the first place? Just a hunch, Denny. And also his philosophy of sitting and waiting for a killer. What do you mean, sir? A good detective just doesn't sit and wait for things to happen. Who, on the contrary, sir, I consider you the finest of detectives. Thank you, Dave. And I was about to suggest, after we deliver Roberts here to the police, that you join me in some sitting and waiting. Denny, what are you talking about? The big top over there, sir. Hmm? I suggest that we sit down peacefully in the stands in the big top and quietly wait for the circus to begin. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. Mysterious phone call arouses my curiosity. And so Denny and I are off on a strange story that begins with a stabbing and ends in murder. I call this story The Deadly Stand-In. Be sure to listen, won't you?